Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to talk about the Hyperloop conference that's happening right now over in uh, Golden, Colorado. They have a live streaming link here. They have a really interesting speaker agenda um, of U.S. Department of Transportation, um, Colorado Department of Transportation, uh, Hyperloop TT, and Transpod. So I definitely give uh, a shout out and a recommendation and you can even see their, their live meeting streaming right now. Uh, we're gonna follow in and out of it throughout the day. Um, wish we could be there, but um, sounds like a really exciting event. So next we have SwissPod. And this is a really interesting group um, coming out from the SpaceX pod competition. They've released kind of a drip of different news developments. First their pods, but now they've released merchandise. So you can now own an official SwissPod a sustainable t-shirt or reusable um, tote bag and merchandise. Um, so congratulations. Um, next, they are still releasing interesting developments, including this picture. Um, I'm not really sure, can you levitate? You know, is that a new pod? We haven't seen it. We've seen so many different pods from them. Um, maybe that's their latest uh, test pod, but who knows. Um, next, we're gonna go to Delft Hyperloop and Eric's is helping uh, develop um, in partnership with Delft Hyperloop their wheels. And in case you didn't know about Eric's, um, they help companies manufacture products and they just know how to get things done. So it's a really interesting public um, private partnership um, in building their really strong wheels that will sustain um, the pod over 500 kilometers an hour and then break. Uh, quickly. Um, next, I have a really interesting um, YouTube video um, and uh, a member of Delft Hyperloop, um, Maki, uh, she uh, gave a nice TEDx talk about what is Hyperloop, um, why should Hyperloop um, be in place and why she wants to work on the competition it. of last summer organized by Elon Musk in which we became second with our own Hyperloop. And we've done a lot of research on this Hyperloop no air resistance so it doesn't take up energy due to air resistance and i really liked this when you look close every sector has a decreasing line in co2 emission except for transportation which is transportation this red line is the only sector which is still this high well, this cannot be the correct way of course but the hyperloop has no co2 emission at all and when you put solar panels on top of the tube it can even be a hundred percent so I would highly recommend you check this out on YouTube and give a listen. Um, of course, uh, Tata Steel is also helping um, Hart, which is the company, um, Hyperloop, and um, they kind of released this promo that was so in put together in, in place with Hart Hyperloop. Um, Hyperloop needs to operate. And again, we're going to fast forward to their levitation. Into this test facility, we have built the three core systems of the Hyperloop namely the levitation, which is um, the component that allows the vehicle to lift off of the ground, creating zero friction with the track and remain at a stable distance from it. In addition to that, the vehicle is now able to propel back and forth, which is what we call the propulsion. So once the vehicle is moving, we use uh, lateral tracks to actually keep it in place. And when we need the vehicle to go from one track to the other, we pull them towards one track. This way we can decide where do we want the vehicle to go. All of these components were tested in our facility at Delft, uh, in which we have a near vacuum environment. Everything is controlled, and we test everything simulating real vehicle weight and size. And what is great about the realization of this facility, that it's not just the work of a single startup, but it's really an ecosystem that has been working together on this. So all of the different subsystems that are being tested in this facility are already co-developed and supplied by partners right now. Steel is a vital component of sustainable future mobility. Drawing on Tata Steel's high-tech innovation skills and materials expertise, we support the development of Hyperloop. Two years ago, we started our relationship with Hart. And in the meantime, we have created a working system. Especially during the whole process of getting this Hyperloop test facility to final life project. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's going to require a lot of steel. And again, Heart Hyperloop is hiring. They have a ton of um, interesting positions, including an internship in VR. 
um, of course, a lot of mechanical and European standards leads and business development. Um, so really cool. Check out their job posting page. Um, next, we're flipping over to India, where um, there's been kind of a news report that um, you know the local governments in India um, that are working with Hyperloop One want more uh, safety, um, uh, you know, inspectors, and you know, of, of course, they want to coordinate uh, both the science and different offices, uh, and they're wanting a project demo track um, of up to 15 kilometers um, parallel the moon. Mumbai uh, uh, Expressway. So they really want to get the safety figured out first. Um, and that's like a nine mile test track, so that would be huge. Um, so that's really interesting. We haven't really heard too much about from uh, Virgin Hyperloop One, um, but uh, this is just kind of interesting that they're really taking seriously safety and testing out the technology first. Um, next, um, the Boring Company has had some press in that uh, they are hiring people, and this is a tweet from the Boring Revolution, which is also a YouTube channel and uh, focuses on boring company stuff. So let's just. The Boring get a Company is now hiring workers to build the convention center's proposed people mover. The company added 14 jobs on its website, from a tunnel mechanic and engineer to lead architect. In May, the LVCVA approved a $48 million contract. It's being called The Loop, and it would connect the expanding convention center complex. Musk's Boring Company says the people mover will accommodate at least 4,400 people per hour. Digging is expected to start in the next few months. And that's some old footage of inside the tunnel. Now it's a lot more smoother, and they don't need these little guideway things. Um, and here's the Boring Company's job listing page. Um, again, yeah, not too many new careers that I've seen that are different in the last couple of weeks, but, um, but yeah, they're definitely hiring and uh, apply now <laughs> if you want to get in. Um, this is uh, going now flipping to pod competition teams updates. UNSW Hyperloop released this video We're the only Australian of their pod team review. Right now and the only Australian team competing um, this year. So the Hyperloop was conceived by Elon Musk in 2012. Um, it's basically a vacuum train, so you'd be hopping in pods. These would be shuttling you down between major cities at the speed of sound. So when he conceived the Hyperloop and proposed it to his team at SpaceX, they made it open source, which meant that anyone could access the idea and take it in whichever avenue they wanted to. One of the instances of that was uh, to create the Hyperloop pod competition, and that's where the students come in. What sets us apart from a lot of other teams is that this is our first year. UNSW Hyperloop was established in August last year, August, September last year. And with that, we have been working super hard over this time to make sure that everything's manufactured. It's for the mechanical systems. Electrically, we're taking a lot of stuff off the shelf and also developing stuff which has come from SunSwift, just taking it a step further. So yeah, they've finally released their pod and um, congratulations. Um, we're also going to highlight University of Windsor Loop um, and they had their pod reveal um, to some techno beats. And um, th what I like about their website is that they break down the progress on completed. There's still production and safety to go and then subsystem testing. So yeah, um, congratulations on University of Windsor and um, Tomb Hyperloop uh, is still putting out a lot of press um, about their carbon fiber and the not so secret ingredient um, that makes their pod so lightweight. Um, and all of these pod competition teams are highlighting the, highlighting the partnerships that they've had um, with companies um, to help get their pods. Um, I just want to highlight Swiss Loop. Um, and you know, they, all these teams have had um, meet the team member posts um, this one is from Natalie, a mechanical engineer. Um, you know, what's your favorite part, part uh, to work on? And she liked the fluid dynamics and simulations of air in the tunnel. Um, but why did you join Swiss Loop? I find it uh, really interesting and inspiring um, to be working on such hands-on hands experience. Um, and the team work requires careful planning, quick thinking, decision making, and a lot of dedication, which is fun. Uh, although the problem encountered are very demanding, um, there's complexity in the whole thing. 
which makes it exciting. So yeah, um, for all these other Hyperloop pod competition teams, I'd highly recommend you um, publish uh, things that you've learned, um, things that uh, have made you grow as a human and as an engineer. Um, so congratulations on Swiss Loop. Um, there was an earthquake in LA and um, Delft Hyperloop felt it um, and they wisely uh, stopped working and uh, you know went outside and um, it's important to stay alert while working and to leave the workplace when uh, you think you feel a shock. So um, yep, LA is definitely in a basin of earthquakes and um, stay safe uh, Delft Hyperloop and all the other teams that are going to the pod competition. Um, and Delta Hyperloop also, um, you know, released kind of an update. The next two weeks are all about fine tuning. Um, the braking suspension mechanisms are being aligned. The printed circuit boards are being tested one last time. Um, and so is the software. And I think they had an issue with a printed circuit board last year and it, it might have like burnt out or something. In addition, they're also maintaining intensive contacts via Skype with the Netherlands where the engineers work deep into the night in order to give final flywheel testing done. Um, the data of these tests is used in order to make final adjustments to the bot. So good job. Um, we're already looking towards 2020 bot competition. This team from Rabat Morocco um, is releasing lots of good um, Instagram posts on what a Hyperloop might mean for Morocco. Um, you know, 20 minutes by train, two hours, 44 minutes by, or 12 minutes, you know, by Hyperloop, so that's cool. Um, and they have released this cool infographic of what it requires to get to um, the pod competition in 2020, which I hope is happening. Um, but congratulations on MRL Loop or ML, MR Loop, um, Morocco Loop, and so good job. And we'll be following you guys for a while. Um, this is an interesting video that came out of Hyperloop UC. D, um, UC Davis, um, I kind of neglected to remember that their pod is, uh, has a cold gas thruster propulsion system um, and pneumatically actuated friction brakes. And um, yeah, so this is the picture of the propulsion system. You can see the gas cylinders and then the nozzle of where the gas will come out. Um, and they released a video of it firing. Yeah, it's loud. Uh, I remember standing next to the tube during a competition and you'd hear the sound in the tube. And it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So good job uh, Hyperloop UCD for testing this out and releasing the photos. Um, and that's about it. Um, stay in the loop. Um, we're gonna be going to SpaceX pod competition. If you have any other ideas about interviews or if your team wants to be interviewed um, before the competition, I'd be happy to do so. But um, stay safe and uh, stay in the loop.